Welcome back everyone, it's Garland here bringing you another Neverwinter video. Uh, and today we're doing something a little different, we haven't done this on the channel yet. Uh, we're going to be going over the latest lockbox. Uh, this is going to be the first time that the uh, Glorious Resurgence lockbox is dropping on PlayStation 4 and I've been getting a lot of questions, so I figured, well let's just make a little mini guide on it. Uh, unfortunately this is about the third time that it's been dropping on Xbox, so we're not too thrilled about it. I don't know why they just didn't leave us with the Fireman and gave PS4 the Glorious Resurgence. But yes, the Glorious Resurgence Locksbox has been released on PlayStation 4 this week. Uh, let's take a look at it. And if you inspect it, uh, you do have a chance to pull the Resurgence Legendary Pack. So if we take a look at that, if you pull this, you actually get to pick which Legendary Mount you get. And this is going to be the first time that PS4 is getting access to these mounts. Uh, or the Artifact, or the uh, Race. Uh, so you have the Emperor Beetle, the War Horse, the uh, Tenzer's Disc. Imperial Rage Drake Skeleton Steed is the legendary mounts. Now the token of Chromatic Storm is an artifact. It's pretty decent. And at the very bottom you can see the sigil of the Metallic Dragonborn. Uh, basically this is the Dragonborn race. However, the appearance of it is very shiny. Uh, some players want it. Uh, they will pay a large sum of money for it. Uh, it is pretty rare. Uh, this is just my personal opinion, but I think the uh, Glorious Resurgence is one of the best lockboxes in the game. However, it does seem that it has the worst drop ratio as well. Now let's move on to the Epic Artifact Pack. Uh, again, um, nothing too new in here. I believe you can get all of these artifacts, or at least most of these artifacts, out of the Trade Bar store. However, if you don't use Trade Bars and you happen to pull one of these, uh, well, you can choose which one that you want. So those are all the artifacts that you can get. And now we do have the Companion Pack as well. And I believe most of these are also in the Trade Bar store. Uh, but if you do pull one of these packs, you will be able to choose one. And then we also have the Epic Mounts Pack, which yet again, I believe all of these mounts are available in the Trade Bar store. However, if you do get lucky enough to pull one out of a lockbox, well, it's just easier if you don't use Trade Bars. Now, this is one of the big items right here. Uh, PlayStation 4, you guys have been going strong now for about uh i believe you're coming up on your fourth month now already uh and this is one of the main reasons that they didn't give you guys this lockbox here is just because of the ensorcelled arsenal uh, so if you look at this you have a chance to get either a weapon a sidearm or a cloak now these are i want to say best in slot while you're leveling from level one to sixty uh these will level up with you. I don't. I think it stops at 60. It might actually level up to you all the way with 70. I think it actually does. The Ensorcerer levels with you all the way to 70. Uh, so this is... If you can get... If you're making an alt, or if you're just starting out on PlayStation 4, and you can get a hold of uh, your Ensorcerer weapon and your Ensorcerer sidearm, you can actually use that the entire way until you get your Twisted set. Uh, the Ensorcerer stuff is... I don't want to say better than the subpar uh, elemental artifacts. However, they are pretty close in statistics. Uh, so if you can get your hands on, like I said, the ensorcelled weapon or sidearm, <clears throat> you can actually use that all the way up until you get um, to about 2,500 item level and you can start farming Epic Demogorgon to start farming your uh, Twisted set. That's one of the main reasons they didn't give you the lost lo this lockbox up front because they didn't want everyone you know having decent stuff right off the bat so four months into the game you guys do now have access to the ensorcelled uh, moving on to the trove of elements which is another key factor of this lockbox especially for you ps4 users because now you do finally have access to the will of elements which in my opinion is the best uh, artifact effect in the game uh, also the uh, archons are now available to you guys the uh I believe the Fire Archon's in the Trade War store, however, the Earth, Air, and Water, this is the first time you guys will have access to the other Archon's. Uh, and also out of the Trove, you have a chance to get uh, Elemental Weapons. These are actually just skins 
Uh, don't think that they're really worth anything unless someone really wants that weapon skin. And at the very bottom, you can see the emblem of the cult. Now, don't get scammed or tricked into this. The emblem of the cult is 100% worthless. It has no effect. It has nothing. All it is is a vanity item. So don't get the emblem confused with the actual will itself. Uh, they are two different items. Uh, the emblems, uh, usually, if I get any, I just delete them. They literally sell for like 1 AD on the PC and like 10 AD on Xbox. They, they are just a vanity item, so don't get scammed by it. Don't get confused by it. Uh, moving on, at the very bottom, we have the uh, Resurgence Provisions, uh, which is just, you know, refining stones, and you can get enchantments out of there. Uh, and then there is an enchantment pack where you can get your superior marks, your greater marks, and then it also contains uh, some refined items, uh, as well as the Tenebroes enchantment and the Embalmable Runestone. And also the Plague Fire and the Bronzewood. I believe this is the first time that you'll have access to the Plague Fire and Bronzewood. I'm not sure if the shards are in the Enclave or not, but either way you can uh, get the lesser versions of that out of this pack. And then we have the Profession Special uh, special Pack, which is, uh, there's actually nothing too good in this one. You can't even get the, uh, the bags of crystals or gems or jewels to power level your professions. Uh, I did a power leveling video very early on in the channel. Uh, those don't drop out of this one, unfortunately. Those don't stop dropping until the uh, New Life lockbox so the professions pack out of this locks box is pretty subpar unless you still need some epic quality profession assets and then we have the companion fortification kit uh, which you do have a chance to pull the 30 companion upgrade tokens out of this one and then of course your uh, rank 7 rune stones and if you're lucky enough to pull a rank 8 I believe in the Shandu Ka the previous lockbox on PlayStation 4 you had a chance to pull uh, rank 9's out of, so this one's a little less than uh, the Shandu Ka. I, I mean, you guys have to remember that the Glorious Resurgence actually came out before the Shandu Ka lockbox, um, but this is the first time that you're getting it. Now here's uh, another item I would like to talk about briefly. It is the Genie's Gift. This is what I've been getting numerous questions on, on what they are and how to use them. Uh, so the genie's gift, as you inspect it, it says you can turn it into the relic collector, the trader, the relic vendor, and the relic uh, collector in the select zones. Uh, it says in exchange for currencies from the respective campaigns. Basically, you can turn in one genie's gift for X amount of campaign currency. So Sharandar, Char Dreadring, uh, Icewind Dell, and Well of Dragons are the locations. So we are... In Sharndor right now, if you run to the left side right here, is the Relic Collector. If you talk to him, open up his store, a uh, bag of Sharndor treasures. As you can see, one Genie's Gift will yield you 10 Fade Wild Sparks and 10 Gold Crescents. So basically what I'm saying is if you accumulate enough Genie's Gifts and you're still working on campaigns, you can turn them in for campaign currency. Uh, this is kind of hit or miss. It depends on what the market value of Genie's Gifts is. Uh, someone on PS4 had mentioned to me that the Genie's Gifts are currently going anywhere from 20k to about 100k each, which is outrageous. A normal price would be about 20k each. Uh, I believe on the Xbox right now they're about 15 to 20k each. Uh, you don't want to spend any more than that, honestly. Uh, but the Genie's Gift is basically a shortcut item. If you happen to not be one of those hardcore players that log in every day and grind out your daily campaign missions for the campaign currency, you can simply just get a hold of some Genie's Gifts and turn them in. Now, you can level up all your boons just by turning in Genie's Gifts. So if you trade in X amount of Genie's Gift to the Sharndor or the Dreadring campaign, you can level all those up. Um, now, you can do it for Tyranny of Dragons as well, but keep in mind that you do need other currency for the Tyranny of Dragons. Um, and also, I want to mention that the Icewind Dell you cannot complete just by campaign currency, unfortunately, because you need X amount of reputation. It takes 18 days to accumulate the 350 reputation that you do need to finish your Icewind Dell. Uh, now, my main, my main question and my main concern 
is that when Mod 10 releases on October 18th, 2016 for uh, console, both Xbox and PlayStation 4, is that, um, especially PlayStation 4, you guys are actually getting the Guild Alliance update with your Mod 10, whereas Xbox already has the Guild Alliance update. And coming with the Guild Alliance update, you can actually just buy campaigns. So if you go down to services here on Xbox, I don't know if mine are going to show up because I have them. Okay, so here's here's one, uh, uh, and here's the other one. So you have the Dreadring campaign completion. It costs 5000 Zen. That's basically $50 per campaign. Uh, but if you have the money and you're willing to pay for it, you can simply just buy the campaigns, the Sharndor campaign and the Dreadwing. Uh, the Icewind Dell, I don't think, is active right now. I think the Icewind Dell might be on the PC, I'm not 100% sure. But as you can see, you can buy the Sharndor and the Dreadwing. Now, this did come with Guild Alliances, so you're going to get... Uh, I'm assuming they're going to put these in the Zen market for you PlayStation 4 users when they release Mod 10 and Guild Alliance for you on October 18th. Well, I don't want to say that this makes the Genie's Gifts obsolete, but, I mean, you basically just have to do the math. Is it going to take you X amount of Genie's Gifts to finish your campaign, or is it smarter to transfer your AD to Zen for the 5,000 Zen and just buy the campaign? Uh, and especially if we're talking about alternate characters already, some of you PlayStation 4 users are already having and rolling multiple characters, and, you know, nobody likes to go through all the campaigns again. Uh, so, I don't know if you want to snag some Genie's Gifts, try to sell them for a profit, or if you want to wait and see if the campaigns get added to the Zen store. Uh, and then there is a last item in the Resurgence Locks box that I didn't mention at the very bottom, which is just the Tarmaloon trade bar jackpot. You know, you can get up to 100 bars if you hit the jackpot. Uh, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video on the lock boxes, you know, uh, make sure to leave me some feedback in the comments, say whether you liked it or not. Uh, I felt it was important to do the Glorious Resurgent one and do a little guide on that just because I have been getting so many questions about it. Uh, if you guys don't want to see more videos like that, that's fine. Uh, I won't do any more, but there are a few more lockboxes that will be coming out down the road for UPS4 users, such as the New Life one. Uh, so if you guys did enjoy this video and you thought it was helpful, just make sure to leave me some feedback. Like I said, otherwise I won't, I won't continue to do it. I just wanted to do the Glorious Resurgence because I did get so many questions asked about it. That's going to wrap it up for this video today. This was actually a midweek release. I normally don't release uh, Neverwinter videos on Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. Uh, I felt that, like I said, I wanted to put this out there. Uh, so if you guys have any questions or comments or concerns, uh, you know how to get a hold of me. All right, guys. We'll see you Friday.